Previously on The Business. I've heard so much about this man. First of all, Divan, you've been sitting around for half an hour. Welcome to the uh, the studio. Welcome to Bulls and welcome to the business this morning. You are the owner of The Whippet in Linden. Uh, it's great to have you here. How's it going? Awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming in. Uh, I, I love the fact that you and I are, are casually dressed and relaxed yet. You are just absolutely uh, giving it horns with your business. And that's, that to me says says a million things about where you've come from. Let's go back right to, uh, well, a good few years now, uh, and talk about uh, the corporate divan. Uh, that's where you, you kind of were entrenched. Tell us your story. Wh- where were you? What were you doing sort of 10 years ago? Sure. Not even 10 years. <laughs> Seven years ago, I had an absolutely awesome uh, corporate career at the First National Bank, and I was privileged to work under one of the best CEOs in the country and probably one of those in the world. Mm. And um, I worked as the head of marketing, and then um, I always knew I wanted to have my own business. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. My grandfather came to this country in 1954. He's Dutch and on a long 11-day journey. And um, I took a lot of inspiration from him. He worked for a guy that had his own um, steel company. And uh, my granddad said, I'm going to buy your company. And in the end, he bought his company. Wow. And um, so I, uh, my inspiration definitely comes from him. But apart from that, um, I, I always knew I wanted to do my own thing. I just needed um, the right push for it. So the corporate world uh, comes with all its ups and downs and 50 restructures. And we went through another restructure. And um, I, I knew that that was my, my call to, to take the leap. And I went in and I said to my boss, who's now the new CEO of f and <laughs> and I said to Jock, um, it's time for me to go. And he said to me, how many days do I need to go? And I said, three. And he said, perfect, Monday is your last day. <laughs> and um, that's when I left without a job. And... Um, I was forced to then think about what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And I took three months off to go to Mozambique and dive and drink a lot of beer and eat prawns. <laughs> and then um, the whippet was actually born from there. So um, I think it's important for you to reflect on your life outside of your life rather than reflecting on it inside of your life. This is a business show, and I don't want to get philosophical, but a lot of people are in this quandary at the moment. Call it a, a business midlife crisis, if you will, where you, you've, you've got the salary, you've got the, uh, the middle management to upper middle management uh, car and all the perks that go with it. You're doing nicely, the stability. Um, but you're bored, and something inside you says, this is just not who I really am and what I was what designed to do. What did that feel like, and, and, and what really pushed you over the edge? What was that thing that made you go, I'm going to start a new business? I think uh, you need to, I, I call it my sanity questions. You need to have like three questions that's like your non-negotiables. And um, every day wake up and ask your three questions. I had mine, I said to myself, um, am I happy? Am I adding value? And I'm, am I learning something new? And I woke up and I couldn't answer those questions. And that was my sanity questions to say, it's now the time to make the move. It's only you that can determine what those questions are and ask yourself those questions every day. So um, I kind of stuck to those and I knew when the time was right that, um, you know, that was my move. Mm. Um, but to determine what your sanity questions are, only you can do that. So for me, it was easy. I knew when the time arrived. Don't just do it. Um, understand when the right time is to do it. Devan, you, you say you were in Mozambique. I can just picture it. There you are on the beach, you know, drinking your little pina colada or beers, whatever it is. <laughs> and you come up with this idea to open a coffee shop. Sure. Did you think to yourself, let me see what kind of franchise opportunities are available? Or did you know from the beginning that this was going to be something you would create yourself and Talk a little bit about that process. Sure. Um, I think um, I always knew I wanted to write my own unique story. I, I was never in the market to go and buy a franchise. That was never my idea. The Whippet came um, from the view that brands tend to kind of um, move into neighborhoods and say, well, take it or leave it. That's what brands kind of do. I said, let's flip, flip that process on its head. Um, and we decided on Linden as a suburb to open up the first store. So we said Linden has a heritage, it's got a story, mm. it's got a beautiful rich history. Um, let's rather use that history and then celebrate that and just say the Whippet brings you all of that that you already love, um, we bring you that. So we took the heritage and the history of Linden. Interesting enough, Linden um, was the biggest export region of peaches to the United Kingdom in 1932. Oh, of what? Of peaches? Of peaches, really? yes. And that was an old peach farm. So we took that heritage and worked that into the decor and worked that into the menu. So we celebrate Linden's history. Um, people love the suburbs, so um, we took what they already loved and made that our own. 
and um, that's what the whippet was about. So, and of course, we only try to support local. Um, when that's your differentiator, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Talk, talk to us about that. I, I think the world, I, I pride myself in, in leapfrogging um, um, Starbucks on this because two months after we opened up the Linden, they opened a similar concept. But uh, when we say we support local, we source all of our produce local, as in from the lady that plants it in her garden. We get salads from her. Hmm. We also use all of our um, used coffee to put back into her garden, which the she then provides us with salads. We only use local bakers. We only use the local butcher. So wherever we can source local from local artists, growers, etc., that's where we get our stuff from. Um, and that's, for me, that was just the right thing to do. Um, it just local simply made sense. Um, and that's, that's what the Whippet is all about. It, I've, I've heard a couple of, of colleagues and, and people that I know are saying they've almost turned the Whippet into their local office. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and, y and then you hear other stories from people who are running similar kinds of businesses who can't stand that kind of trade because they feel that, oh, well, you're only going to spend money on a coffee and you know that doesn't really help me with my turnover. Mm -hmm. But you've got a very different take on that. You welcome that kind of clientele with open arms, don't you? A absolutely. Um, uh, we've got a lot of people that say, um, you know, um, th they feel quite bad for sitting long. I say, this is the way the space was created. Mm. It's a space for you to relax. This is your home away from home. Um, I, we don't show anybody away. Um, on, uh, people tend to naturally move. For example, if the restaurant is full and you've got a person sitting at a four-seater table, they kind of offer us to move to a two-seater or to move to the counter. People naturally are good. They naturally mm. move. We want people to enjoy the space. So the Whippet combines design and architecture and food. The space was designed for you to enjoy, not for you to move. One of the things that, that I've, I've noticed that I think also differentiates you, Devan, is, is your use of Facebook. And, and there are a lot of smaller businesses that can't really get their heads around this space. You come from FNB, which has really gained traction in the space. So you had the benefit, at least, of having been sure. exposed to some of the best practices. Um, did you open the doors and sit back and wait for people to walk through the door? Did you have some kind of a marketing plan that you put in place that, that decided up front it would use Facebook, which Starbucks has done very effectively? Sure. Talk to us a little bit about that. Um, and how Facebook is so integral to, to traffic through your doors. Sure. We opened our Facebook page before the store actually opened mm. up. And we said to people, um, um, join our story or follow our story. So literally from the day that we decided to get that specific space um, to the day that we battled to find a chef, everybody knew about the struggles of us actually putting up the store. Um, if a builder gave us trouble, they knew about the <laughs> trouble and that the builder gave us. And, and the fact that we didn't find a chef, people kind of proposed, they sent us CVs. So people like to form part of your story. So we invited people to join us before we actually opened up. But Facebook, I think what people kind of get wrong, so we've got three and a half thousand followers. People will say, who the hell follows a coffee shop? Well, we've ex got exactly, yeah. We've so got what's your answer to that? I think <laughs> understand what you want to do in the space. That's very important. People yeah. kind of have a Twitter account for the sake of having it or a Facebook page for the sake of having it. Mm. Predefine what you actually want to do with it. For example, I just um, posted a post probably about three or four days ago where I said, you choose your coffee, why not choose your music? So people were allowed to determine their own playlist that they hear um, in the store. And the response was absolutely phenomenal. So people tell us what they want rather than us telling them. It's, I'm just looking at your Twitter timeline here. If, if I may just jump in for, for a second. There, there's, there's two things happening just from at a glance. First of all is you're advertising uh, products. There's uh, So Close to Christmas goes the tweet. Celebrate with a 10 Rand cappuccino. Um, get into the weekend with our, our triple moose cake. There's a picture on Facebook there. Uh, so that sounds damn good, by the way. Um, but then th there's, there's another thing here which is quite interesting. You say, our chef or fence is thinking about adding a smoked chili and salmon salad uh, with pancetta and, a, and mint lemon yo yogurt dressing. Your thoughts, question mark. Yeah. You're starting a dialogue, um, a and in, in, in turn, you're advertising, but you're also giving people the opportunity to say, no, that sounds awful, or wow, I can't wait to try that. Yes. That's quite clever, isn't it? Absolutely. We're, we're natural content creators. We're natural storytellers, and we kind of invite people to tell their story to us. Um, we say, and that's why we say, you determine your menu. If the chef thinks about something, do you like it? Yeah, you like it, we'll add it. If you don't like it, we don't add it. And that's the way that we you create content in the store, and I think that's the way to go. Devon, it's a, 
it's a very saturated market. You have you have the big players, the mug and beans, the Vida cafes. Yeah. Uh, you know, Brazilian was big. They, they they don't seem to be huge anymore. But there are a lot of coffee shops. Sure. Uh, why why enter with such passion and such vuma into such a saturated space? I'm kind of the view. The reason why the race are doing well is because um, they've got no beer co- good competition. That's my view. You. <laughs> Business is actually simple. You just simply need to be better than your competitor and then you will get business. Um, It's a saturated market that has become incredibly commoditized Mm. and none of the brands have any pure, true South African personality. Mm. We kind of adopt Italian names for our products. Um, We're of the view that there's a big gap in the market for a truly South African coffee experience and that's what we're going to do. But our business is built on people and food and drinks. And that's important. Um, People come to a shop for people. We know your name, we know your drink, we know what you prefer. That's a different approach. Divan, we we spoke earlier in the show about ESCOM's uh, predicted rolling blackouts, uh, another phase coming up. But I know you've got a a great story to tell about the last phase of blackouts that your business had to survive. Sure. Yeah, we um, we were out of power for about four days, oh. and a- as were a lot of the suburbs around us, and a, a lot of the businesses as well. And um, we tried to make coffee, um, making coffee without electricity <laughs> is quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided on the third day that we're going to close the weekend. So j- just tell you, uh, the impact on small businesses are massive. Yeah. Um, this can literally kill you. So we decided on the Saturday, I, I posted on Facebook that we've decided to close our store because we can't deliver the service that you expect from us. And not even 15 minutes after that, somebody posted back on Facebook to tell us that um, they've got a generator for us. And um, I said, thank you very much. And then not even two hours after that, they delivered the generator to our door, which we are now able to power our whole store with a generator. And South Africans absolutely love entrepreneurs. We love entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, A lot of people want to be entrepreneurs, but we like entrepreneurs. And you kind of have to expose your story to them. And if they understand your heart and your heart in this business, they will always support you. So for me, that restored my faith into people again. So and, and, and I mean, have they left the generator with you? Yes. Is, it, is it the stores now? It's the stores now. It's worth about 12,000 Rand. It's absolutely <laughs> awesome. We haven't had, uh, we haven't used it once no, after that, that. That's fine. Yes, uh, that's okay. Be yeah. prepared. It's <laughs> coming. <laughs> and of course, the person who dropped that generator off gets free coffee they for do. life. They you know? do. Not absolutely. to mention that Devon's had another really bad experience. Something yes. about uh, a house burning down. Yes. And also customers coming to the rescue. Yes, absolutely. About two and a half months ago, my house burned down. Um, on my way back from Mozambique, some um, one of my friends found me. She says, your house is burning down. So as the fire trucks drove in, I drove in as well, trying to grab whatever I could grab. Ah. But um, the good story is um, on that same evening, that whole neighborhood, Linden is an awesome suburb, but um, ladies offered us food. They offered us accommodation. So one of the local guest houses gave us accommodation for three weeks. And um, this, it's crazy. I mean, the ladies come in, they said, we'll buy 12 milk tarts instead of buying six, or oh. we'll drink 20 coffees instead of drinking 10. And the way the suburb mobilizes around you is absolutely phenomenal. So for me, it was a strangely awesome experience um, in people. And um, no, it was awesome. But it speaks a lot about bringing a personality into your business, doesn't it? I want to ask you about that because, uh, I mean, where it's your your strong point in Linden, you you speak with great passion about the suburb. And I know it well. Uh, Personally, I I know the area very well. And it, it, it is steeped in tradition and it's steeped in history. Where to from here? Because you've now got to take that philosophy, that keep it local, that sense of community, that sense of history, etc., uh, and 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 open another store somewhere. Are you planning to do that? And if so, how are you planning to become so local within a new community? Because it doesn't come easy, does it? It doesn't. Um, for example, we're going to open up a new store in the CBD where we'll source all of our um, local uh, fruit and veg from local hawkers if they're still there if by the time. Still there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You might have to revisit that business plan. Yes, yes. But I, but yeah. I think um, um, the, uh, we said that Lind- uh, um, the whippet was always about reintroducing South Africans to their neighborhoods. Um, we wanted... P- uh, the, the history is there. We just make it come alive. That's the difference. And the personality doesn't sit in me. It kind of sits in your history and your story and in our people. So it's actually easier to duplicate than we think. Um, we just make that heritage and that history come alive. That's De- what we do. Devan, you very graciously keep referring to we. So tell us, who is we? Um, I've got um, one awesome business partner and um, then a new business partner that just came on board. 
And uh, small business is all about teams. It's a reality. The um, entrepreneurs can only survive when they've got good support. And if I st talk about we, I talk about friends and family as well. Mm. Uh, that's kind of what keeps you, uh, what keeps you going. Yes. And financially, uh, when you started, did you take out a loan? Not at all. Uh, I never approached the bank because I knew they would never give me <laughs> anything. And they deny that. <laughs> and so they, I know they you've do. had this discussion yes. and they say you should have come to us and asked us. Absolutely, they will say that. But um, no, we've decided not to approach them because we knew <laughs> they weren't going to give us anything. So 99% um, of businesses use bootstrapping to start, i.e. family and friends, and that's the way that we started. Um, uh, turning 30 this year, going back home, asking your mother for a loan is quite an interesting process. <laughs> um, but it makes you humble and makes mm. you incredibly hungry for it to actually work. Sure. And um, yeah, and uh, canceling your brand new mini that you ordered, and um, that is humbling, and it's an awesome process. And would you go through the same process by choice, let's say, for the CBD uh, outlet as well? Uh, what process do you uh, 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 trying to find the funding yourself, as opposed to going for those formal mechanisms? Absolutely, I think um, I, I'm. I'll always rather pay myself back than having, or family back, rather than having to pay back the bank. Mm. It it takes away a lot of stress. Uh, okay, let's turn our attention to the actual nuts and bolts of, uh, of the store. I'm interested to know things like this. Do you serve, because you say you're very South African and proudly yes. South African, yes. uh, do you serve milk tart? We do. Um, milk tarts are our speciality and we get it from a local baker. We've completely changed her life around selling <laughs> about 60 to 70 milk tarts per day. Well, wow. you have and to try my milk tart. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I qualify as a local. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. You're from Northcliffe. Yes. That's local. Great. That's local. <laughs> and about 100 milk tarts over a Saturday. Fantastic. And it's, um, it's absolutely crazy how milk tarts have um, changed the shop. And it's become our signature whip at cake in the yeah. end. So, yeah. yes, we do do milk tarts. Fantastic. It's just such a great story. You, you, you are an absolute inspiration uh, for anyone who's wanting to start start their own business. And I love the, the philosophy of just getting out of big corporate and, uh, and you kind of wanting to grow and wanting to experience more. That's, that's really inspirational. Uh, Devan, where are you? Where can we find you? Where can we find you on Twitter and Facebook, etc.? What, 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 what are the mechanisms there? Um, our physical store, we're on the corner of 7th Street and 4th Avenue in London. Um, our Twitter handle is the Whippet ZA. And you will find us on Twitter at the Whippet Coffee. And I see that, uh, that just having a look at your, your website here, there's, there's also kind of side items that you're selling as well. It's not just coffee and food. Yep. Uh, I see there's, uh, there's a new range of bags. You've got a bag on your website here. Uh, you've got ale, which you're talking about yep. here. Uh, Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping. Tea uh, yeah, is yeah. amazing. Support local for Christmas. Just, just tell uh, us like quickly about that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. We um, we stock local designers. We kind of uh, try to stock stuff that you won't find anyplace else. We also have two Capetonian designers that chose us as their pop-up store, which is uh, they call Dark Horse. Uh, we also support um, Red Ochre, which is a Zanspread community project, and they are also now featured in South African Fashion Week. So um, we love supporting entrepreneurs who supported us in the mm. beginning and making them great is, is, is something that we would love to do. And um, obviously we do the gift boxes now. It's, we just launched it last week. Um, it's also appearing in Get It magazine as one of the top um, gifts to buy. Um, so, yeah, if you want a Christmas box, um, please come by and pop by. Fantastic. A lot of people are going to be listening to this going, I wonder if there's an opportunity to franchise. It's a question that we haven't asked. Uh, are you intending to do that uh, in the near future? When the time is right, we'll do that. Okay. Um, when we run out of our own money, we'll um, probably <laughs> have to do that. Um, but yes, I think um, uh, f um, franchising uh, too, too early is, is an incredible risk in your business. So um, once the time is right, we'll get there. But for now, we'll, we'll do it ourselves. Okay. Devon Buerta from The Whippet. You can find them at thewhippetcoffee.com. That is the website. Uh, and go and have a look for them on Twitter and Facebook as well. Thank you for your time today on The Business with First National Bank and uh, their business banking sector. We're very appreciative of you uh, coming in. And, and good one for taking the leap of faith and, and starting a business which is doing so well. Thank you. Fantastic. What a great story. The Business on balls.co.za Brought to you by FNB Business Banking.